Happy Wednesday morning, everybody. All right, we have a few housekeeping items to cover before we delve into this video, which has really got a lot of stuff in it. First of all, I know you guys, a lot of people have written, you miss me saying, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm so sorry. I just, we needed a change up after three years, but I'm hoping you're enjoying the new tagline. Number two, my merchandise line has got a few more things in it. At the bottom of the description box of each video, you'll see the, I don't know, the different things you can buy. There are cups. They're, they come in different colors. There are some that have the tagline. There's some that have thin on them. There are items like um, aprons. Now, when you look at things like this, and they, some have different designs, you can also choose different colors. So feel free to go shopping. All right. Next item. Really quickly want to let you know, people have asked that I turn on the closed captioning. It is now on. I keep getting notices from people. Did you know this happened today? You didn't report on it. You guys, I work 24 hours behind. That way you get accurate information, not just clickbait, which is what some other people do. Okay. Um, I want to make sure I give you all the information. So let's jump into today's because we got a lot. Let's go. To start off with, King Charles and Queen Camilla sent out a very nice note uh, about the um, earthquakes in Morocco. I thought it was a very touching note. All right, moving on. Next up, I just wanted to update you guys. The good, the bag, and the, and the rugby has now received over 1.5 million views. Yeah, that's how good it is. Next up. We have a Beatrice spotting. We haven't seen her in a while. She uh, was coming out of a cafe called the Bluebird Cafe on Thursday. She was busy on her phone, wasn't paying much attention to what was going on around her. And uh, But she looked really cute. And you know what I love about her? The fact that she's wearing sneakers. I don't know if you guys can see that, but sneakers. She doesn't have to wear high heels all the time. I love it. Now, what I'm about to say is extremely uh, selfish, very selfish, actually. She's only got the one daughter, but of course she has a stepson, but her daughter is so freaking cute. I wish she would just have another baby. <laughs> Get on it, Beatrice. Now, she was also spotted at the Cornbury House Horse Trials. Um, that's the same event that Sophie, I showed you the other day, that Sophie attended. It is an international, five-day international event, and it was set up by David Howden, who was the gentleman in the photo with Beatrice. Forgive me, I'm only going with first names at this point. She was also photoed, had her picture taken with Natalie, Fiona, Phoebe, Hitchcock. Uh, they all looked very nice. All right, moving on. Next up, we have Sophie. Um, we know that she is the patron for the guide dogs, and there is a guide dog named Piper. He's coming up on his 10th birthday, and he's due to retire. So Sophie invited Piper and her owner to Backshot Park, Berkshire. This is where um, Sophie and her family live. And we, again, Sophie is the patron of guide dogs. Now, the CEO who's recently um, leaving, his name is Tom Wright, and the new CEO, Andrew Lennox, showed up for the ceremony as well. And to mark the retirement of this fabulous service dog, after all these years, Mary, the owner, and Piper were presented with a special dog tag that says, putting my paws up. How cute is that? As is usual, a big thank you to Remulad Sauce. We've seen this dress before. I believe she wore it on one of her, um, you know, royal tours. She looked lovely. All right, moving on. All right, I just wanted to throw this in. Three of Princess Diana's gowns sold Friday at auction for $1.62 million. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Uh, this went on during the Legends Hollywood and Royalty auction, which was held from Wednesday to Friday in Beverly Hills. So three dresses sold were the red silk Bruce Oldfield gown and two dresses by Catherine Walker, the black silk velvet and the white silk crepe strapless gown off the shoulder. Uh, very nice. This dress she wore to the premiere of Hot Shots. It was a comedy show movie with Charlie Sheen. It went for $571,500 or 458,000 pounds. 
The black and jade dress was worn to a gala dinner at the Royal York Hotel in Canada in 1991. It was purchased for $571,500 or £458,000. Now, before we talk about the third dress, I want you to know that all three of these dresses were owned by a businesswoman from Michigan who originally bought the gowns and was using them to help make money. She was, you know, for a scholarship fund, which I think was very nice. So anyway, she passed away and the gowns went up for sale. Now, the very last dress, which was a black and white Catherine Walker dress that Diana wore to a private event, sold for $508,000 or £407,000. Looks familiar. Hmm. But then so do these. You know, I knew that Megan copied Diana, but I didn't realize that when she got the chance to copy Diana at her wedding, she took that opportunity. Why else would you dress your mother in just like Diana right before your wedding? Like, oh my God. All right, moving on. All right, you guys, here we go. We know Catherine went. Now it was William's turn. He went to watch rugby, Wales versus Fiji at um, in Bordeaux. Same thing that uh, Catherine did. He stood, he sang, and uh, the national anthem in Welsh, he did very well. He's pictured with his equerry, Lieutenant Commander Rob Dixon, also quite handsome. And in a show of great sportsmanship, before the game started, the president of Fiji walked over and shook William's hand and, you know, good luck. And I think that's so nice. Now, William was seated next to Gerald Davies. He is the 50th president of the Welsh Rugby Union. Now, again, just like with Catherine, it's pretty obvious that he's into it. He loves rugby because all during the game, he was very animated, laughing, smiling, biting his lips, putting his head in his hand, covering his mouth. Even his equerry behind him was very animated. It obviously was a real nail biter of a game. And um, yeah, I, <laughs> what's not to love about this? But he was obviously enjoying it is my point. Now, I have to tell you, part of this, what's upsetting me, is that lots of articles are coming out going, he came here to France, which, by the way, is a one-hour flight from where he lives. It's like a little over an hour. But he didn't go to the World Cup final when it was England against Spain and Australia. First of all, the trip would have cost a fortune. Second of all, the carbon footprint. and he. Third of all, with the time change and the length of the flight, which I think was like... 19 hours there's a very good reason why william didn't go okay now the government did send the foreign secretary to support um you know the people but listen if he had gone they would have been calling him a hypocrite for for flying that far due to the carbon footprint you know it's one of those things where it's like it's damned if he does damned if he doesn't so the welsh won very good nail-biting game they went back into their dressing rooms and Prince William went back afterwards to meet them. There were some pictures that came out of him talking to them and, you know, he was wearing the red and white tie, the striped tie and, you know, having a good time in behind the scenes, which I think is very nice. Obviously, they were having a good celebration. The guy on the left's having a beer. Now, while uh, William was back there, he once again shook hands with the Fiji president and his wife who was accompanying him and took a picture with their team, which I think is lovely. All right, moving on. All right, here we go. Princess Catherine went to prison. She went to HMP High Down, which is a prison in Surrey, to learn how the charity is supporting those in the criminal justice system recover from addiction. Remember, she, she did that a few months ago with the whole addiction thing. It's a men's prison, and she's visiting as patron of the Forward Trust. Only Catherine could walk into a prison looking like this. I mean, seriously, you guys, I have such hair envy. This is the sort of thing when I see this, I think, oh, I should dye my sister dyeing my hair again. And then I'm like, nah, even if I dyed my hair, it would not look this good. I would love to know who does her blowouts because her hair is, all, oh my God, it's gorgeous as usual. So she walked in and the first thing people seemed to notice was that something was wrong with her right hand. Well, come to find out, 
she had a trampoline injury. So besides the cold water bath, she also jumps on a trampoline on a regular basis. She must have fallen. But, you know, the palace came out and said that the injury was small, nothing serious, nothing broken. Okay, it looks fabulous. So she walks in to the um, prison. She's greeted by the officials. Now she has to go through the whole thing. So what does she do? She sits down on a chair and she gets sniffed by the drug, the, the drug detection dog because this is what people go through as they're entering the prison. She also went to visit, apparently there's a restaurant there called The Clink. It's award winning and it helps inmates become trained in hospitality and stuff like that. Now, Catherine shadowed a family during a normal visit. So, you know, she went through the security procedures. Then she went to, you know, see the families. She heard about the impact on families and, and the new efforts that the HMP High Down has put into practice to make the experience better for children, especially when they show up to visit family members. And later on, she... Um, spoke to serving prisoners to discuss with the Forward Trust how they're getting help from this charity while in prison. Now there's different services for different needs for the different men because not everything is, you know, one size fits all. And one of the programs is called The Bridge, which is an intensive abstinence-based program, uh, Stepping Stones, which is a low to medium intensity intervention for alcohol and drug consumption, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Love it. All right, let's move on now. All right, we are going back now to this whole Windsor picture of Harry again. So a few more things have shown up. First of all, again, this is the account that supposedly took the picture of Harry coming out. And it's in the news that Harry was only allowed to visit the Queen's grave at the last minute and there were conditions put into place. Gee, I wonder why. Now, common sense tells you that the chapel is open to the public at 10 a.m. Why would he need permission? Well, apparently he wanted to go to the vault uh, and for that he needed permission. And so the family said, absolutely, you can go, but it has to be private. You can't take pictures. You can't, you know, let the leak it to the press that you're there. You can't do it. It has to remain private. And of course, Harry said, oh, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll abide by your rules. Problem is that didn't actually happen. He was quote unquote papped. It's, it's a lie, it's not true. Here is the person who supposedly took the picture. As you can see at the top, there's the name, okay? Oh, I just happened to catch this picture of Prince Harry coming out the side door of the chapel. And then it was picked up by this person who, who as you can see said a member of the public spotted Prince Harry coming out of the chapel and they snapped this picture. So the first thing that was brought up was the fact that the picture was timed at 9.30 a.m. How could the public have taken a picture at 9.30 when the chapel and the whole area doesn't even open up till 10 a.m.? Interesting question. So the Royal Rogue pointed it out that this woman, Audrey Forbes on Twitter, asked Wilkinson how it's possible that this member of the public took this picture when St. George's Chapel doesn't open till 10 a.m. She was immediately blocked when that was pointed out. The same person then put up the times the chapel was open, as you can see, not open till 10 a.m. And the lengths to which this person would have to go or Harry would go to, to get to the chapel. It was a photo op, you guys. It was a staged photo op. And it was reported that it was a photo op that Harry was told he had to give up his devices. And listen, he didn't follow the rules. He can't follow the rules. Everything for him is about publicity. He shouldn't be shocked the next time he requests to go and he's told no, because he can't just go. They, he and Megan both pull this crap constantly. Whew, moving on. All right, next up really quickly, they did a poll and uh, apparently four people they want out of the line of succession. Mm -hmm. They want Beatrice and Eugenie out. They want Andrew out. And of course, shock horror, they want Harry out. Can't really blame them. Yep. All right, moving on now. All right, as an update, one of my subscribers actually uh, wrote or called, I should say, the German Ministry of Defense, I guess they're in Germany, and asked who was paying for Harry's accommodations, and they said they were. And security, that's the German taxpayer. No wonder Canada doesn't want them. Ugh. Next up, Sabira Lohan on Twitter said that people are sharing uh, pictures for Invictus, and um, if you zoom in, what you see are empty seats. Like the, you may take a zoom in of the front row where Harry's sitting, but the majority of the place 
is empty. How sad, I mean, this is again, it, they tr they're trying to make you seem like Invictus is such a success and it's not. Day three came for Prince Harry at the Invictus Games as he's, the thing says, as he's waiting for Meghan to join him. Well, he actually looks happy in these pictures. I wonder if we're going to see the same look on his face once Meghan does join him because I have a feeling you're going to see the fake Megan or, or the fake Harry. You know what I'm saying? The, the one that's constantly being steered around by his wife. Now, they're saying that the reason Megan didn't go was because she wanted to give Harry a chance to shine, to show his authentic self, the real Harry. I don't know that that's a good idea because the real Harry we've since found out is kind of a jerk. <laughs> I mean, you know, this article just came out. Where Harry admits he has regrets, but that royal straight jacket just had him ground down. So he's not done smashing on the family. Not by a long shot. Now, of course, to drum up interest, um, Invictus on Twitter is putting up pictures like this. Look, there's NASA Administrator Bill Nelson and Secretary of the U.S. Navy Carlos Del Toro and the Honorable Minister of Defense of Nigeria. You know, and they're, they're trying to attach his name to these high-level people. As is usual, Harry is forgetting that Invictus isn't supposed to be for him. And he's so passionate, he said, I'm encouraged to keep up the spirit of making a positive change. Yeah, but you're not making a positive change for yourself. Remember, some of these people were in the army for 10, 15 years. Harry was in for a whole 10 weeks and he wants to be their savior. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to say, I think Harry really does see himself in a role that's really not his. This picture was absolutely done for the cameras. Him kissing the top of somebody's head to show that there's no hard feelings. And I completely agree with Lulu L.A. This is St. Harry. You have to wonder what he's thinking. Hmm. All right, time to move on to Megan now. Now, I've told you this before. The poll has come out. Megan is at her lowest likableness in the United States. So what do you do when that happens? You do pap shots. Believe it or not, there are people online who are saying this was not a setup pap shot. Okay, so the paparazzi back grid, of course, dial a pap. Uh, just happens to be at an In-N-Out burger just as Meghan Markle happens to drive through in her $140,000 Range Rover. And he just happens to spot the car in the drive through line. And he knows it's her, even though the windows are tinted and nobody can see in. And then after taking the obligatory shots outside, he happens to run inside and get ready for the photo for when she hits the drive through window? Does anybody really believe that scenario? I know the sugars do, but does anybody with half a brain really believe that? I mean, give me a, give me a break. So let's take a look at all the pictures available and let's debunk this once and for all, shall we? First of all, a big thank you to Evelina P for this photo. To start with, this is a picture of the inside of that in and out So the person who took the picture would have had to have been this far away on the other side of the counter in order to get the picture. Also, I know it's hard to see, but do you see the screen next to the window that's lit up with the orders? You can clearly see it. That's how they know which car coming through has the next order. I know that because I worked at McDonald's as a teenager. Next up, Look at this picture. The guy in the front is leaning over because he was blocking the shot. The guy next to Megan is, I don't know, looking over to see if the picture got taken. And notice the order screen to the right is blank. Mm -hmm. Absolute setup. Also notice Megan's looking right at the camera and so is the girl next to her. They're making sure that the pap got the picture. Now, it's pretty obvious something has happened to the skin on her face. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying that as an observation. She's only 40 or 41, whatever she is. And as you can see from this earlier photo, which was only taken a year ago, her skin wasn't like that. But look at it now. People are saying that that's a possible side effect to Ozempic. Hmm. I don't know if she's on it or not, but if she is, she needs to stop. Hmm. Okay, so everybody was like, will they, won't they? Is she going? Is she not going? Well, we're guessing she's going because she was spotted at LAX getting onto her plane to fly to the Invictus game. She gets out of a ridiculously expensive BMW, only the best for her. We have that picture with her hand by her face, you know, that she takes everywhere she goes. 
Now, you guys should know that LAX, where she was flying out of, does the big planes and also does private jets. So there's no way to know which one she was, you know, getting on. I would be shocked if she flew commercial myself, but okay. Now, some of these pictures that are coming out make you, again, wonder about the Ozempic thing because this is an unretouched photo taken right from the Daily Mail. Here's another one. This is what ha this is what happens when you have too much Ozempic. But I mean, my goodness, this is this is just getting to be a little a little ridiculous. Anyway, she's looking right at the camera. Who here believes that Backridge just happened to be on the tarmac in the area to catch them getting on the plane? It's pretty obvious. They called them again. All right, you guys, you know what to do. Put those comments down.